Okay. Hi, everyone. I want to thank you for being here. Um, for those of you who are new to me, I am Elizabeth Floyd. I am the creator of Painting Flowers with Liz. And um, and I, I just want to tell you a little bit about my, my background. So I have been a full-time artist for 14 years. I was an architect for close to 10 years. Um, I have, since leaving architecture, I have had a, a very um, wonderful experience being an artist. I have sold my art across the world. Um, I am represented in multiple galleries. Um, I've been teaching oil painting now for a little over six years. And um, and the reason why I started my painting flower uh, painting flowers with Liz membership is that I wanted to create um, an a community environment that encourages and you know creates that supporting environment that helps us fellow artists um, grow into the artists that they that that you want to become that you know that you dream of becoming because I believe it's possible to incrementally improve your art skills and to gain mastery in painting realistically and um, this free class is a um, every month we focus on a different topic that we the people inside the membership we incrementally grow in our um, in our experience as an artist and art is to me a, it's a it's both it's both um the actual act of painting but then there's all this intellectual stuff that helps us better connect with the viewers those you know we create art to create connection and to you know it's it's a way of um communicating in a visual way and so that's why we're here and so this this month's class is on painting um like we're going to focus on one component the most important component in my opinion on starting to build a strong painting composition and then like inside the membership we have a skill building um, workshop on the first wednesday of this month where we're going to dive deeper into into um three of the top components that I think are most important for um, making strong compositions. So let's get started. I want to share screen with you guys um, with our slideshow. And I just want to say that throughout this call, you guys are um, welcome and invited to um, ask questions as I go. Um, I I love teaching. I love teaching in a slide, you know, kind of, it's very, um, it's very academic, you know, being able to give you a slideshow and talk, um, talk these ideas. But I find that when there's also a little bit of discussion, so like think of this as like a seminar, when there's discussion, we have that opportunity of, of learning um, and actually absorbing the content just a little bit more. So you're always welcome to ask questions, but please keep it on topic. That's the only thing, you know, you're welcome to ask questions, but stay on, let's stay on topic. Um, so let me share screen and then we'll get started. Okay. Um, composition, how to organize a painting to support your artistic idea. And um, I'll just say, I'm a big believer in doing thumbnails and doing compositional sketches. And in fact, the, the background is the inside of one of my sketchbooks that I use specifically for compositional ideas. I'm always fiddling with, with like developing ideas. Um, so with that in mind, let's get started. Okay, creating art is about creating connection with others. Composition is all about expressing your idea to make that connection. As artists, it's your job to develop the artistic idea behind the, behind the painting. This is inspired by all sorts of things that are found in life and nature. Um, you know, our lives furnish us with those visual motives that inspires that inspires you to create art. It is your and it is your ability to then interpret, you know, those inputs and turn them into visual cues that then creates your art. And this is why how you design your composition of your art is so important. And, and when I'm all the, the principles that I'm teaching right now about art, yes, I'm talking about oil painting and I'm using pa oil paintings as examples, but the reality is it works for drawing, for um, 
watercolor, acrylic, sketching. Um, I mean, even embroidery, you can use these, you know, these ideas that we're going to be presenting. So composition is uh, makes it easier for you to make connections. And it's it's engagement that makes, I think, this is my personal opinion, but I think what makes art so amazing is when you have made that emotional connection with someone, you know, and, and like, because of the internet, we can make connections all across the world with people that we may have never met, but we create this art and, and it's like, oh my God, that person too shares, you know, a similar and, but still at the same time, unique vision of the world. And it, and it's, it's magical. You know, that is magic. That, that's what art is about. So expression implies emphasis and selection. So this, that, that bolded quote is a quote I have had as a, as a, um, as a weekly reminder in my iPhone for like close to seven years. It helps, it helps remind me that my expression in art automatically implies the emphasis I'm choosing to focus in on and make more important and me selecting that and really, so, and then like, you know, converting that into a painting. Um, there are times when you are emotionally moved by a subject. These feelings are what you seek to capture in your work. Um, paint, the paintings you can you compose are the visual reactions of your emotional response to that subject. When stuck by something, take when struck by something, take a moment to analyze it and break down your reaction to that subject. So, like, um, you know, creating art is very emotive and reactive. But I find that if you take just a little bit of time to raise your awareness about like, you know, what are the things, analyze the shapes, analyze the colors, the values of what you see. Think about how you may want to interpret what you see and how to interpret that into a painting. And this is how you begin to plan a painting composition. Um, and like, for example, this is another, um, spread from one of my drawings and you can see even on the back I have more sheets I'm constantly doing thumbnails I'm constantly playing with ideas um and you know there there it's so informative for my career um for the art that I create and over there the composition of a painting is the expression of the artistic idea you work with the components of a painting and organize them to support and reinforce your idea. And these components are diverse. For example, it's your format, which is your picture plane, your focal point, the shape or forms, you know, like, are you going to create two dimensional flat shapes? Or are you going to make, are you going to render them and create three dimensional sense of form? line values color texture rhythm and balance which is the movement or the stillness within your composition unity and variety pattern and these are just to name a few i mean like i've at one time created a list and it was like for 25 different components um personally i think when we're working into working and starting on learning composition because it is such a big and gigantic field of study I think it's really important to focus the first three that I find that are most important is the format, focal point and um, center of interest or center of interest. And then the, your balance and our movement and like movement is also, I sometimes use the term rhythm, um, rhythm and balance, balance or movement. Those are the three most, in my opinion, most important initial compositional ideas to really figure out and master and like express. And um, inside the the membership and our skill building, we are going to dive. We're gonna we are going to cover all three. For this class, we will be specifically looking at the format. Um, and so let's talk about that. So the format. The format is the starting point of all composition because it is the shape of the canvas or panel or paper that you are using. When creating two-dimensional art, you have essentially three shapes to choose from. You have a vertical rectangle shape, 
you have a horizontal rectangle sh shape, or you have a square, squarish um, shape. Now, this one is, I know it's square-ish in that it's more square than horizontal rectangle or vertical rectangle. And that's how I think about, um, I give square kind of a loosey-goosey. Um, um, it doesn't have to be verbatim. 12 inches by 12 inches or six by six or 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. It's, it's like if it's within an inch or, you know, like kind of a couple of degrees of um, a percentage, it's but definitely more squarish than horizontal or vertical Then that, that works for me. Um, another term for format is your picture plane. That picture plane is your flat two dimensional painting surface. And, um, so yeah, so let's talk about the simple elements of a composition and how and how these simple elements automatically already start to inform your, um, your, your composition. So the format is the starting point of all composition because it is the shape, you know, of what you're gonna be painting on or drawing on. When thinking about composition, it is also always a good idea to keep in mind that the edges of your format are your longest visual edges or lines. And like, um, as, um, as painters that paint realistically, um, that is important because the, 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 the way our focal, you know, our center of interest, and then this, you know, the the secondary center, um, secondary supporting elements, how they interact with your edges, are critical in helping your eye, you know, guide your eye through the format. Um, and so, like all, you know, the simple com elements of composition are your format. I'll open one of the curtains so I can see out. Please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If it Please, please, please mute. Um, okay. Um, with your sim with your um, four elements of composition. So we we start with format, and you start with any format, and if you place a line in it, immediately that line begins to have a relationship with all four edges of your format, and like I love. I love these 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 simple kind of like abstract diagrams that that like take a um a an idea a design idea of 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 art and like represents it and because it's a very you know very quickly you can see how a line that is essentially the same diagonal so the same angle and essentially kind of placed like ratio wise you know, in, you know, kind of like, it's not quite the center line because there's your center of the, the format and it's a little bit offset from center and it's got the same diagonal and it's a little, and it's not touching the edges of the format. How automatically the, the relationship between that line and your edges of your format are distinct, you know, distinctly feel different depending on whether it's a square format, a vertical format or horizontal format format. Now, if we would extend that line to the edge of the format, we automatically crop our format into two big shapes. And that too automatically starts to change the feeling of, of that format of, you know, of your picture plane and it affects your picture plane. And then you, you know, when you add a tone, like um, a value shape, to one of those two shapes of your format automatically it has already changed it changes it again and so the reason i have this slide in here is to to demonstrate how so very quickly you you be you know your composition already begins to evolve and um and it and it's it's simple and elemental but it quickly it quickly evolves and um and so, you know, keep that in mind that as we're, as you're painting, as you're working on your art, um, you know, you are creating an entire universe, a little microcosm 
in time in that little painting that you it whether it's little or gargantuan you are creating that and it you know and it is expressing something that is emotionally important to you and um, it doesn't have to be but I think the best art is one that has that emotive quality behind it as well okay now I want to dive in a little bit further into you know I want to look into look at the these three examples that I have and look at how um, important their original format is in engaging and reinforcing the emotive quality of the painting. Um, okay, who's Sanchi? You are drawing all over my slideshow. Could you please erase that? I don't know how, I didn't even know that that was possible. Um, one moment, let me see how to stop that. I don't know how to stop that. Um, one moment. Oh, I think I just, okay. Okay, sorry about that. You know, every time you get into Zoom, there's a new feature that I wasn't aware of. And um, and sorry, Sanchi. Um, all of a sudden, I just saw these red lines showing up. Um, so hopefully, I'll go back in and it'll be, if it's still there, guys, we'll just ignore it. Um, oh, they're gone. Great. Um, okay. So let's, let's, Let's regroup and go back to, we're gonna look at these three examples of some paintings. One is a vertical format, one is a horizontal format, and one is a square, a square-ish format. And I, you know, I also I would be remiss if I didn't talk about that you also have the choice um, with painting um, or you know, embroidery or whatever to do a tondo or a circular or oval-shaped format. Um, however, that shape format is is not often used, but it is um, design-wise a tondo, uh, that circular shape. Um, if it's a circular shape, I find because there are no corners, I find that it a lot of the same attributes that you have with the squarish format can be equally applied to a tondo. The only difference is that you will never have that those corners to to create some really fun, interesting negative, um, negative space shapes. Um, okay, so let's, okay, so, okay, this was my, this is my, I, um, one of the things that I wanted to do in this, this class um, is to talk about how, you know, like the artist um, Giovanni Bellini, when he did this portrait of the, um, of the Doge of Venice, he had the option to do a horizontal, um, rectangular format or, or a square or a vertical, you know, the vertical one does historically, you know, and I can, you can feel it, it, it gives off better, um, better dignity. Um, but like what would happen if he chose to, to, to make it a rectangle. And so the rectangles that I'm using are for, for this demonstration, is a five by four ratio, which is a eight by 10, 16 by 20 um, ratio. Um, and, you know, I wanted to see, well, like, you know, what would, you know, what would it look like if we did, a, you know, we just spread it out and turn it into a rectangular shape, you know, immediately the, I think the energy starts to subdue and become a lot more calm. And because this one is centered, you've got a very strong pyramidal very, it's, you know, a, a pyramidal shape is the most stable shape in, um, it's, um, in architecture, it's one of the most structurally sound, stable shapes. Um, and, and I think, and when it's an equilateral, like this one would fall into, that's so stable. If, if you, if we push, you know, the, the doge over a little bit to our, when we look at the image to our, to our right, um, it gets a little, you know, we get a little bit less balance in that we have this wonderful negative space that is countered by the weights here, but it still has a very, you know, stayed 
it, it's a much more calmer expression than like the original vertical format. And then we have here again, as a square format, um, again, it's very, rec you know, we got a very pyramidal, very stable. And then when it's, oops, when it's an asymmetrical square, it's, it's interesting to me, the asymmetrical square is, might be the visually weakest. Uh, and this one to me, like when it, because you always also want interest too. And um, you want to always, you know, there's, when you're creating a composition, you want both, you want some stability, but you need a little bit of variety and interest. And, you know, these are my opinions, but I would say that the, that the asymmetrical square is to me one of the weakest the i like the asymmetrical rectangle one a little bit more because of that wonderful large space of negative space um but the truth is none of the rectangle or square compositions are as powerful as the the vertical rectangular composition that giovanni bellini originally chose to to you know to represent the, the stoge portrait now let's look at this um claude monet painting by um or this claude monet painting of poppy field so the original painting is this rectangular format and you know i just want to talk about like so what's interesting is the horizon line is almost cutting it in half We've got sky and field is almost even. The only different you've got a little bit of variety as it's as the horizon line lifts up here. You've got a house in the background. You've got a couple standing on the the crest of the hill, and then you have two people in the valley. And so you have this wonderful diagonal of interest points there. And then that tree is important because it crew. And it looks to me as if like Claude Monet probably painted this and then he went back and added on this tree because there probably was too much unity going on but we have this wonderful shape of the composition and this horizontal this horizontality which to me represents like emotions of summer idol um restfulness the the calm of of a wonderful like summer day um you know, but very casual and relaxed. When I look at the vertical composition or, you know, the, the cropping of the vertical, first of all, like when I cropped it, the this couple um, fell out. And so it becomes just a painting really about this tree, that house, and these two people here. But it also all of a sudden becomes very dignified to me in that I find that the painting actually becomes more potentially about this, like the idea of like, say, um, a a portrait of um, of landed gentry, or, or it reinforces this idea, this uh, um, uh, gentry and uh, aristocracy. You know, it automatically raises the um, the 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 to me the emotional interpretation. Like I, even though like it's different clothing style, but I would almost think that this is like um, for you Jane Austen fans, this could be like. Um, you know, Pemberley or, you know, a, a painting of, of, um, of, um, Fitzwill and Dar Mr. Darcy's house. Um, and, you know, and that, that majesty of, you know, the aloofness of, of like, um, of Mr. Darcy. Um, and then the rectangle, the square painting is, is to me, it's like a smack between the two. Um, it has, it's no longer got the dignity and kind of the, kind of a, because to me, what's, okay, one of the things also is to me about the vertical composition versus the horizontal is that the vertical, even though the scale hasn't changed, to me that the dis, the, the emotional distance between two people walking in a field and the house, the big manor house in the background, all of a sudden to me becomes like more extenuated. It feels like more pulled away where with the the horizontal composition it doesn't feel as remote as it did in the, as it does in the vert in the vertical composition and where the square composition it's really kind of a combination it really becomes a middle ground it's neither 
lofty, but it's neither sedate and calm and that, that summer idol. Um, and this is where like the square composition definitely is not in my this is all my opinion of course everything i'm teaching is my opinion um the square composition may not be as strong okay now let's look at the concept of a square format so the original um zinnias in a glazed pot by jan bogarts is not a full full-on square a full-on square composition is this one right here and so it would mean that like it would be chopped off right there and like right there. Um, but what struck me is when I looked at the compositions, and then the, the rectangle is a five to five, um, a five to four ratio again. Um, and then this one example is it's centered where this one is off offset, off center. And what got me in thinking about is that the way this composition is organized, it is it it has a strong con, like contain it feels very contained in its almost square ish um, format in a pure square format it has the same containment and then in the like in, in a slightly more stretched out rectangle it also has a really excellent containment with it being like almost centered um, compositionally wise this is a little bit tight between the edge of this of this zinnia and the edge of the picture plane. And that's probably why Jan Bogart's made it a slightly wider than a pure square composition. Um, and in the one that is centered horizontal square, to me, I find the having the extra negative space does support the composition as well so either one and then the off center one is has almost the same feel as the other you know the the original the square and the centered rectangle horizontal rectangular one um you have a little bit more negative space over here which is perfectly fine compositionally wise because in western culture we, we read left to right and so having a little bit of extra, like say runway to enter a painting from on the left side is, is fine. In fact, um, I know a lot of artists that incorporate a little bit more visual runway or negative space on the left side of their format, just because it's okay. You know, we're used to reading across from left to right. So, so we can like, the idea is like you can skim quickly through the, the upper left um, corner of your picture plane and um, and the eye knows to keep on going to the right. Um, what struck me was interesting is how in turning it into a vertical um, composition, and again, it's a five by four ratio. So this would be 10, like say a 10 by eight or 20 by 16, um, is how by raising it up and giving the negative space up here, I think immediately it became, it went from being like a casual flower composition sitting on a book, say that like you brought in a bunch of flowers and you set them on the first surface that you found and then you kind of left and it's a pretty little vignette. But by giving it more negative space on top, it immediately made it a more lofty. There's, there is a little bit more dignity found in that composition. And, um, and so I think, um, yeah, that's, you know, those are my thoughts on the, the shape. So like, um, why format? Why is it so the very first decision you make in creating your composition is deciding on the shape and the scale of your format. Like what size canvas are you gonna paint? And so it is important to think about what it is you know, like what emotions are you trying to express? Are you going to ex try to express something that has just a little bit more dignity to it? Or do you want to incorporate a little bit more casualness, some calm? Or do you want to play with a little bit of both? And then, you know, and then with that, you affect and adjust your 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 decision-making process that way. Um, once you know what you want to paint, focus on 
that idea and decide what format you think will best convey and support the, the artistic idea. The quality of your expression and the ability to engage your viewer is helped out by deliberately deciding how to organize the components of your composition. And the first decision you must make is deciding on what will be the format's dim dimensions. Is it going to be vertical um, oriented? Is it going to be horizontal or is it going to be square? Okay. Thank you guys so much. Any questions? No questions? Nope. Okay. Well, then um, that's that's my lesson. Um, and I just want to encourage you guys to always think about your formats. You know, think about the comp the and go out there and look at the art that you like and see if there is any commonality. Do, are you are you painting? In, um, are you drawn to paintings that are vertical? Are you drawn to paintings that are horizontal or square? Or, you know, and then like, then like even look at the ratios. Do you like a four to five ratio or do you like a two to three ratio? So like a four to, um, four to five ratio, eight by tens, 16 by 20. A three to four ratio or um, yeah, a three to four ratio would be like a nine by 12, um, an 18 by 24. And then there's two to three ratios, which, what is that? That's like um, 12 by 16. You know, um, I think that's right. No, what is it? That, that's a that's a three by four ratio too. Um, two, to, two to three ratio. So that would be a four to six, uh, you know, a four by six. Um, and so what's that then for 18? 20, what is it? So like a four by six. Oh my gosh, you guys are making me do math. Or I'm I'm trying to do math in front of you, where um, which I can often do, but not on command. Um, so but you get the idea, you know, like go out and look at the art that you like and um and investigate, you know, and investigate, well, what is it that you're drawn to? And like have an idea sketchbook and like cop you know do thumbnails you know or explore and um and really study about things um okay and um, yes. yeah um Laurel because I don't remember how I turned myself off but I have okay. no idea okay um my question is thank you for that because I've it's a lot of food for thought and I really love it um my question is now if we join your program the yeah. okay for example, this would be the lesson, or this is one of the lessons. Yes. And then, then what? A week later, you we do exercises. What what will happen? Oh, I'm thanks. Um. So okay. So this Wednesday, I'm teaching the, the like an extended version of the of the lesson, a skill building class. So inside the membership, every month we have a a a lesson, a skill building lesson. And it's really for your edification, you know, for you to apply to your own work. I do have inside the membership er, every month, we do have a painting. Um, like I share um, an image for you guys to paint from and it's, you know, but it's all on you. If you want to paint that one, you can, if you want to paint something else, you can. And then we have, we have that call once a month and it's about the, the lessons are about an hour long. Um, and then, and then on, um, the third Wednesday of every month, we have a Q and a and painting review. So what is that? That's, um, if you have any questions like last month, um, Michelle had a question about varnishing and Patty had a question about how to reuse panels or painting, you know, that like, how do you like sand them down <laughs> and like maybe re repurpose the panels if you want to repurpose the panels. Or if you have a painting that you've worked on, but it's a over a year old and you want to go back in, how do you get back into it and have a good mechanical archival connection between your layers? Um, so we have questions like that. 
Um, everybody's invited to to share one, upload one photo of a painting that they're working on. And um, I try to get through as many as I can in the hour that we have for class, for the Q&A. And I just go through and do, do reviews. And it can be stuff that you're working on independently, or it can be the photo reference um, that I shared, um, which several of y'all did share last month, um, the reference, the photo reference that we did. And then like you have the back catalog of almost all of my online classes that I've taught. The, the, the one caveat is that if the class has been taught live as a group class um, more less than a year ago, like 12 months and plus the end, by the end of the class of so 12 months from the time that class closed, it's not part of the membership. There is that exclusivity for all new classes that I teach. Um, you, it's you get that um, you get that private one-on-one -on -one in that class community. It's not it's not part of the membership until it's become over a year old. Any other Thank questions? You. No, that was terrific. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, and so um, and of course, as members of the of the um, of the of the group. Um, you're also invited to this one too. In fact, several of the members who are members of the of our membership are also on this class right now. And this our Zoom are um, connected in now. Um, so that is that's I want to encourage you guys if you would like to have a community, because we do, we have our own private community that is not part of Facebook. So it's not like you're gonna get into you're not going to get into like the community and then like get pulled out because you get link, you know, like link bait, you know, baited to go check out something else. It's like, you know, um, it's a community where you can upload photographs, ask your questions um, outside of the, um, the Q and a call. Now, if the question is a really big, long question, I will ask that we table it to our, our live Q and a, because some questions are just easier to, talk out and demonstrate with like say look at this and you know and talk about stuff um but yeah it is um it's a really good good group where we are a it's a wonderful group of ladies and um, i encourage you to join me and join them into the group and yeah so with that i will let you go if there's no more questions about composition and the format. And I just want to say thank you guys so much for being here. It is a pleasure to have this opportunity to, to, um, to teach this idea that I, I love geeking out on this type of stuff of, um, of, um, of art and, um, and, you know, having, having this opportunity to, to do these like monthly little slideshows are, it's just really fun. And thank you so much. Have a good one. Take care. Thanks, Liz. Thank you, Liz. Thank you.